I thought that it was like knitty, like knitting, naughty, but no, it's N-I-D-D-Y, naughty, N-O-D-D-Y. N-I-D-D-Y, N-O-D-D-Y, knitty, naughty. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to the 15th episode of the Love in Stitches podcast. Um, as you can see, I am in a new location. So this is actually in the same room that I was in for the previous 14 episodes, except that I am facing a different way. And that's because I have a great new tool and I have these awesome lights that are behind the camera. Like it's actually blowing my mind right now how um, much light they're providing. I don't have any other lights on in the room. I have the windows, the blinds closed, and all I have are these two lights that I got on Amazon. Um, they came in a kit and there was a third light that came with it that didn't have like an umbrella like these ones have for soft light and total it was about like $52, which I think is um, a good price. They're not like um, industrial or anything, but they're pretty great and about the same quality as the tripod that I have my phone on right now. So we're kind of in the right range here. So if you are someone who wants to take photos at home maybe, or you also record a video, I will link the exact uh, set of lights that I got if you are interested in checking it out. Um, so, oh, and the reason that I can be now in this location, um, this is actually where I wanted to be originally. This is my um, Ikea Kalix or Kalax, Kalix, I don't know. It's this open square shelf from Ikea. And I had a dream always of having this for my yarn so that my yarn can be displayed openly and I love it um, and I wanted to podcast over here but the light is actually um, the window I'm sorry is on another wall and in order for me to have enough light I would have to face the window so now I can come over here with my lights um, so you're probably hearing a bit of a storm because we're experiencing experiencing a lot of rain right now um, but yeah what is it? It today is the is Wednesday. I'm on track and it is April 24th, 2019. It is stormy and rainy, but still like 70 degrees. So, I'm actually getting kind of warm. People always say they're warm under these lights and I think that's true. Um, but let me show you what I'm wearing and then I can take it off. But this is what I was wearing today and I have so many things to talk about, so we'll dive right in after that. Look at that. I am getting warm. Um, so this is um, a shawl by Amber O'Brien. It is called the Tallulah, I think. I have it written down here. It is called, yeah, Tallulah Shawl by Amba O'Brien. And the reason I'm blanking on that is, I mean, I kind of forget other things too, but this was actually not knit by me. This was knit by a friend and it was a gift. And it is seriously so beautiful. Um, I believe it was knit out of Miss Babs, and I think she said she got like a kit or something, a kit with the, these colors. And I, this was um, my, knit by my friend Brooke, and we were roommates for three years. And I, we were still roommates when she was knitting on this. And so I got to watch her make it, and I didn't know it was for me. And I don't know, it's like one of the nicest things anyone's ever done for me, honestly, because People who um, knit don't think to knit things for other knitters or, you know, crocheters because you can make it yourself. But that means that nobody's ever giving you a handmade or hand knit or hand crocheted gift. And so I think it's, I think you should definitely make things for other knitters and crocheters because they're the ones that are going to appreciate it the most. They know how much work goes into it. So that's the Tallulah Shaw. Now, I have... I talked last week about how I'm in kind of this like mindset change around my knitting and crochet. And so I have been, now I haven't been casting on new projects. I've just been finishing things. So I have two finished things for you this week and I'm super excited to show them to you. So 
let me grab them. I'm used to having a couch next to me. Now I have to bend, <laughs> bend down on the floor. Um, but the first thing that I have are my Dallas Star socks. And appropriately, I've put them on these Texas sock blockers, which are from Perfectly Catchy Designs. So this yarn is by Rain of Rain of Rain's Obsessive Stitchery. And this was a custom colorway that I got dyed for the Dallas Stars. Some people have told me on Instagram that these look like um, St. Patrick's Day socks, but I don't see it. I mean, I know I see the stars because that's what I ask for the colors for, but St. Patrick's seems very um, lime green to me. I don't know, but <laughs> they said it looks like St. Patrick's. So I said it looks like Dallas Stars. So I have finished them and Rain wanted me to let you guys know that if you are also a Dallas Stars fan and you want these two colors, um, she can dye them for you. So I know we named one of these um, they're, on, they're linked on my Ravelry project page. You can find the link down below. But one of them is called The Hanger because that's the shop where they sell um, inside the arena. And the other one is called, it might be called Victory Park because that's the area of town where the um, American Airlines Center is, where the stars play. Um, but I was knitting on these during the playoff games mostly. Um, I started them back in July when the NFL draft was going on and then I stopped working on them and just kept bringing different things to the games. So I decided that since the series was over and Dallas won and has moved on in the playoffs that I needed to finish these socks. And later I'm gonna show you something I'm planning to cast on to bring with me, or I don't know if I'm gonna to get to go to any games in round two, but I will definitely be watching. And so I can knit on that during the games. Finished object number one. I have now have no socks on the needles. And I don't know if I've ever in the last like 10 years had no socks on the needles. This is a big thing. Now the second thing that I finished is my Woolberry wrap. I'm actually gonna keep it folded in half for right now because now I don't have anywhere to go behind me. And I'm just gonna show half of it to you right now. But this is the Woolberry Wrap, and I'm holding it upside down. This is a pattern by Jen, um, Jennifer Peck of Webster Street Knittery. There we go. So I can't even get it, like, the width of it on the screen, which is hilarious. So this is a basically a garter and lace pattern in two colors. You start with a triangle in the middle, and then you knit out one side, um, bind it off, knit the other side, bind it off, and you have a sort of a rectangle at the end. Um, I think I said trapezoid last week. It's a really long trapezoid. Um, but yeah, so that's what the lace looks like. Now that it's blocked, you can see it in all of its glory. And okay, I wanna see if you can tell something because I did a bad thing. Let me see. There's no space. Okay, look at this and tell me what you notice. Can you tell? <laughs> I can, I'm looking for it though. So the cardinal rule when you're using hand dyed yarn is that you should alternate your skeins of yarn. And that's because hand dyed yarn is um, like, you know, it's not dyed by a machine, it's dyed by a person. Um, they put their own flair on it. Like there's just no way they can make it exactly the same even though hand dyers are measuring, you know, etc. Sometimes they're like sprinkling speckles over their yarn. It's just not going to be the same. That's why we like it. But when you're using multiples, like this has three skeins of the main color, you should alternate by maybe every two rows you change um, to a different yarn and you just alternate all the way through. And I know that and I do that for um, sweaters, but I did not do that here. And it is the two colors are like pretty much the same on this side. I use two different yarns and I don't think you can tell where I changed it. I know that I changed it like right here, I think on this side though. And this was like too late for me, for me to, to change it. It was too late. You can see it. Look, 
Now, luckily, since this pattern is broken up by a contrast color, I felt like I could continue on. When I'm wearing this, you're not gonna see, like this section here is where I change, and it's much, it's a little bit deeper of a color, and it's much more speckled, and I love it. I love both. Um, but yeah, I was like, I am not, well, what I would have to do is I would have to go back, like, pretty far back here and kind of like fade in this deeper color and start alternating. And I just was not willing to do that. <laughs> I was not. So you can see it. I think you can see it on the screen, but honestly, it's really not super noticeable. I had it when it was laying out blocking, I kept looking at it and I, I really had to look for it. So learn from my mistake and alternate from the beginning, even if they don't look different in the skein. Okay, let's talk about the size of this thing. So this is, I had to use, I have a blocking board that has like a grid on it and it's probably five feet long. And then I have these blocking mats that are right here. And I've got like, I think nine of them, which is annoying because usually I do them two by two and then I'll have like, you know, four of them two by two and then one on the end. Like that's not super useful. <laughs> I need to get some more of those because I did not have enough length to block this. So I don't know how long that makes it. Like it's definitely, okay. If I put it around my shoulders, it hangs to the floor on both sides. And I'm five foot six. And so take off like, I don't know, 10 inches from my head, neck at least. So I would say this thing is, is close to 10 feet long. It's a really long. And honestly, I think it might be a little too long. I think I might eventually, not right now, reblock it and try to get more width out of it and shrink up some of the length because that's a, that's a really, really long. Like my um, Springtime in Suburbia, that crochet wrap design that released um, this month, it's bigger than that. It's not as wide, which is why I think I need to probably block it wider and shrink up some of that length and I'll be happier with the overall shape. But I mean, here, I'll put it on. I have yet to take pictures because I just blocked it on Monday night and then Tuesday, yesterday evening, I was pretty busy and then it's raining right now, so I'm not taking pictures today. But I mean, it looks just really lovely. You can see it's not super um, deep right? Not super deep, but definitely so super long. So I think this is a great pattern to do a bunch of like versatile things. Like I definitely can, whoa, definitely can fold it in half and wear it like a scarf. So I'm going to fold it in half. Actually, I actually haven't played with this yet. I think I'll wear it tomorrow because I did not wear it today because I wanted it to be freshly blocked when I showed it on here. I probably shouldn't wear it until I do a photo shoot really. But yeah, like it's still hanging down like past where my pants line would be right here. Massive. I am gonna wear this thing all the time. So, oh, the yarn. So the main color is Predictability by Suburban Stitcher. And I think I even brought the label. So Suburban Stitcher and her signature colorway, Predictability. And it took, um, did I bring the other yarn? Well, it took more than two skeins, but not a lot of the third skein. I probably have, oh wait, this is it right here. This is what I have left of the third skein. Definitely more than 50 grams. I have yet to weigh it, um, but I have another project in mind for this, which is why I brought it over. So. A lot of the third skein was left, but you definitely need three. And then I had this beautiful brown with um, like pink speckles in it. Where's the, <laughs> can't find one end of this. There we go. So hopefully now that I've knitted with it, you can see like the fuchsia and pink speckles that were in it that really picked up the predictability. And that was La Vienna May. And I still don't know the color name. I really don't think it's on here. I have no idea. But I am so happy with my with my wrap. I've been in a wrap mood lately. But now that I've finished this massive, nearly four skein project, like I have one whip. Okay. 
I have three scrappy blankets that totally don't count, but that's it. I don't have anything else in hibernation on Ravelry. I have no socks. I just have one whip that I will show you in just a second. But seriously, I think it's been, I think since I started knitting, I've which was 14 years ago, I've never had just one whip. Like that's crazy for me. And if you're one of those people that finishes something and starts the next, like, I commend you. And, and it really does feel kind of good to have only one thing going on the needles, but I'm gonna start some new things today uh, or tomorrow for sure. So last week <laughs> I talked about just starting fresh. That's why I have finished objects here and only one whip going. Um, but I also wanted to go back to some of my projects that I'd either like finished but wasn't happy with or I one project that was lingering and I wanted to rip them out. They had been in that like status for a while and I just wasn't happy with them. And rather than having them just like sit as a whip and wait, I decided I'm gonna reclaim that yarn, rip it out. I can always knit it again later. I can use the yarn for something different if I change my mind. I can knit the same pattern in something different. So I, wanted to show you that I have, I have done that. So last week, <laughs> this ball of yarn, this is like an alpaca blend. I'm not sure if I kept the label once I finished the project. So I don't know, but <laughs> this was a Coles River kerchief by Tony of TL Yarn Crafts. And now it is ramen yarn. And this was a crochet project. So what I found really interesting the difference between ripping out something knitting, something that was knitted, like when you rip out something that was knitted, it's very like even ramen curls, but this is crochet and you can see that it's very uneven. I guess because um, the length of the, each of the stitches, like each part of the stitch is different, whereas in knitting the length of the stitches are pretty much the same. So I found that very interesting, but I don't know what this will be yet, but now it is yarn, which is amazing. And then the other thing I ripped out was my um, canyon cardigan. So this is now, those are two full skeins of Suburban Stitcher Cinder. And then I had only done like a little bit of these skeins. I was alternating. So that's why I've got, whoa, that many skeins. Um, now with this yarn for sure, I think what I'm going to do is actually re-skein this and then soak it so that that those wrinkles come out. Um, but just to show you like Here's what the yarn looks like. That one's not as curly, I guess, because there's so much nylon in this as like a superwash sock yarn. But the way that you can reskein is by using a knitty knotty. And until I looked this looked it up before I started this podcast, I, I thought that it was like knitty, like knitting knotty. But no, it's N-I-D-D-Y knotty, N-O-D-D-Y. N-I-D-D-Y, N-O-D-D-Y, Nitty Naughty. And I have one here to show you. So this is my Nitty Naughty. I don't remember when I got it or where I got it, but I think I might have purchased it on Etsy. And basically what this is, and I have no idea if I'm using this right, but I turn mine like this. And then you basically take yarn that's in a ball form or cake form, and you wrap it in such a way around these two ends so that you're making a one big long loop, which will become your hank of yarn. Now, this is not a practical size for me. I started putting a skein of fingering weight, like leftover onto this, and it was taking forever because this only makes um, a hank that's like twice as long as this, which is not very long. It's not standard size. So I'm hoping that maybe I can go to like a Home Depot or something and get another dowel that's this size because this just comes apart. Let's see if I can pull it. There we go. This just comes apart. This is just like a dowel. It looks like they've cut it somehow. Um, I guess maybe for like suction so that it doesn't get like suctioned in here. But um, maybe if I can find one that's the same, then I can get a longer one so I can make like regular size hanks, right? I don't know, maybe I'll just wind them back onto my winder or maybe I just won't do anything and I'll just knit it like it is. <laughs> we'll see. But I have, um, so I ripped out the shawl, I ripped out the sweater, and then I ripped out one more thing, but this thing I was um, 
not just ripping out to get it back to yarn, I'm ripping it out to fix it. So I wanted to show you my Ruffled Romance sweater. So this is my one lone whip, at least currently. And it is a crocheted sweater. Uh, Ruffled Romance is a sweater by Lee Satori of Coco Crochet Lee. And right now, all I have is the yoke. So this was actually a finished sweater. I had finished it. I took finished object photos in it. It was completely done. I blocked it and wore it and was not happy with it. And the reason I was not happy with it is completely my fault. <laughs> so I was a test knitter for Lee and I um, chose a different yarn weight than what she recommended. And so my gauge was different. And that just means that the stitches, my stitches per inch did not match hers. So in her pattern, it took three stitches to make one inch. And with this, it was taking four stitches to get one inch, okay? So I knew that I would need to choose a larger size to actually get the right size. This is not what you should do as a test knit or test crocheter. I think that I, um, in my swatch, like was actually getting closer to the gauge and then as, as it went on, it turns out I really wasn't getting close to gauge at all. So don't do that as a test, especially for like a sweater when you're trying to size. So now I am fixing some things that I wanted to adjust anyway, so it kind of worked out. Um, but yeah, so when I finished it, I had these ginormous sleeves and this teeny tiny body. And so what I did is I just took it back to the yoke and now I'm going to redo the body so that it fits me correctly. And I was super proud of myself because I actually did a lot of math. Well, not, I mean, it was pretty easy. So let me unwrinkle this. Here's my math that I did during lunch at school yesterday. And I took information that I learned at one of the classes I went to at DFW with Amy Herzog. And she's the one who has all the books and tutorials about like knitting to fit your body, um, making sweaters that fit you the way you want them to fit. Um, and so I really took that to heart and this is what I did. So I took some measurements. I measured my bust. I measured under my bust. I measured my waist. I measured my like hip, like actually where my hip bones are. And then I measured lower on my hips where I want the um, hem of the sweater to fall. So I took those measurements and then I measured, <laughs> then I measured like originally before I ripped it all the way back, like where I had started the, um, it's not working for me. Usually I'm sitting on like a um, ottoman so I can like get up on my, push up on my knees and stuff, but now I'm in a chair, harder. Okay, so I measured like where I had originally started the body and how wide that was around. So here's, Here's just some numbers for you and you tell me why this wasn't working. So my measurement under my bust, which is, I mean, the, the, the armholes split like between like your mid bust line and under your bust ish, right? That measurement for me is 32 inches. I'm not a seamstress and I measured myself, so that could be not super accurate, but let's say roughly 32. The sweater was 27 inches at that point like not comfortable. This is where it gets worse. I measured where my waist was and my waist is 30 inches. And again, 27 inches around 30 inches. And then you sit down and it pushes out more, like super not comfortable. Um, we learned in the class that you probably, like at a minimum, want to have around five inches of ease at your waistline, like that skinniest part of you when you bend over, um, because when you sit, it's not gonna be the same, right? And then my high hip was 36 inches, so that's almost a 10 inch difference from the sweater that I was making. And then my lower hip, like where I want the sweater to fall, 39 inches with a 27 inch tube. Like, no wonder this was so uncomfortable for me. Um, and so I went through and decided um, how many inches of ease that I wanted in each of these places. So I knew that in my bust, I wanted about three inches because I didn't really need a ton there. Um, and then in my waist, I wanted more like seven inches of ease. 
And then in my hips, I went between like three and two inches of ease so that I came up with basically one measurement from my bust to my waist, which was gonna be 37 inches. And that's not what I measure, that's like the size of the product that I'm making. And then as I went down toward the hip, I knew I needed to get at least four more inches um, in there. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. I basically just readjusted like how big I needed this thing to be. And then I did some math to figure out like how I was gonna do those increases. So I'm just gonna do a simple A-line. I'm gonna be increasing two stitches every eight rows, but I don't need to go through how I got there because that's a little bit mathy. But I'll show you what I did on the sweater. So I ended up going from, I think like 116 stitches around to now having a hundred and I added 32 stitches. So whatever that math is, <laughs> I added 32 stitches, which is about eight inches because I was getting four stitches per inch. So I'm not hundred percent sure this is going to work out yet. The math says it will, but after I haven't done much at all, I've done like three rounds as you can see. <laughs> so after I do maybe two inches or so, I'm going to try it on and see how it's fitting. I think already it's looking so much better. The other added benefit of this is that the sleeves are now this big and they're supposed to be big. They're supposed to be ruffled. And before they were like that big. Yeah, that was too big. So I added, basically I added two inches on each, um, each side of my body on each half. So eight inches total. And I did that with math. Like I didn't, I didn't say like, let's just try two more inches on each side and do a little bit and see what happens. I did that with math and then now I'm gonna try it and then I'm gonna try it on. So yeah, I'm really, really excited um, to use those skills and to hopefully make a sweater that is comfortable. <laughs> this yarn is Madeline Tosh and I think it's Twist Light and the color is called Copper Pink. And speaking of changing colors like before, when you have a hand dyed yarn, um, this is harder to see. I'm, I'm hoping it shows up better in the video, but when I bought these, I bought four skeins and two were distinctly lighter and two were distinctly darker. So I knew for sure I was going to have to alternate. I was actually worried about alternating rows and getting a stripe. That's how different these were. And they didn't have any that were the same dye lot or they could have been the same dye lot. I can't remember. So um, I have been alternating them every row and it has turned out fine. I haven't gotten any striping, at least I don't think, right? But now that I have, these are the two that I unraveled. You can see they're crinkly, but I knew I was gonna need more yarn. I'm making the body wider and I did have more yarn. Like this is how much I had left over when I finished. This is fresh yarn, hasn't been used. So now what I've gotta do to make sure that I don't have you know, blended together sweater and then boom, this color comes in and it's very obvious. I'm going to add this skein in. So I'm not going to do that until I've done a few inches, I think, but then I'm going to add this one in and I'm going to be alternating, you know, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, so that they're all blended together. And I should have hopefully enough yarn. <laughs> and then I had to rip out the like little details on the sleeves. So I now have two little balls of yarn that I know are gonna be enough for my sleeves because my sleeves are now smaller and this is what it took when there were more stitches. So yeah, that's my ruffled romance sweater, my one and only whip right now. I think I'm gonna put it, I have it in this really cute Erin Lane bag that I got at DFW Fiberfest. But I think since I'm gonna have three balls of yarn attached at once, I'm actually gonna put it in my small float tote that has like the three little cups and that'll just be a lot easier to arrange and not get tangled up yarn. Okay, so those are my whips. And now I want to show you some of the things I'm thinking about casting on because I can't just have one whip. All right, so the first thing that I am wanting to cast on is a hat. Um, we are going to see Oh, what's it called? Avengers Endgame this weekend. And I need something simple that I can knit on in the theater that I can knit on in the dark. And I don't have any socks going right now. And I'm kind of holding off on casting on socks because I'm anticipating um, 
needing to knit a like specific sock sometime in the future. So I'm holding off on casting on any socks until that time, but I can also do a hat and that's a really great travel around project. So I'm going, I'm planning to cast on um, the Everyday Slouchy Beanie, Beanie, I think it's Beanie, not hat, by Tristan Molina, who is Dragon Horde Yarn, and she's got tons of sweater designs, but it's a, it's a hat that uses a fingering weight yarn held with a mohair. I'm trying to gather up all my yarn without dropping it into my tea that's over here. There we go. Okay, so I'm using some leftovers. So I have the rest of the yarn, the rest of the Suburban Stitcher predictability from my Woolberry wrap that I'm looking at on the floor. And then I have the rest of my mohair from my Lusuoso scarf, um, which is in separate balls because somebody decided that they were gonna play with it. But I'm wondering, and I won't know until I do like a little swatch, um, if these colors would work together. I think they will because this one actually has like a purple in it and it's very, I mean, it's very light. So it's going to bring the color of this much lighter, but you know, this is a mauve -y, like purple. I think they're going to work really well together and I need to weigh this and see exactly what the yardage is on it um, to make sure I have enough before I begin. So I think that I'm going to be casting on an everyday slouchy beanie here in the very near future so that by the time I go to the movie on Friday night, I will have something to knit on that's like already started. Um, the hat is a free pattern and it's a folded brim and then just a slouchy, fuzzy, beautiful hat. Um, the other thing that I've been wanting to start is a tank top. I have a few friends that have come out with some amazing crocheted tank top patterns in the past couple weeks. And I don't know which one I'm gonna make first, but I think I know what yarn I'm gonna use. So this is a very special yarn. Um, as you can see in the label, it is not in English. Um, this is a yarn that my friend, actually the same one that made me the shawl that I was wearing at the beginning, um, my friend brought me this from Greece. And it's, I think it's from Greece. I mean, I have no idea what language this is. And I remember her giving it to me and thinking, this looks like, you know, the scenes you see with all the houses on the hills and like blue rooftops and stuff. So I believe this is from Greece. It's a 100% mercerized cotton. That much I can read, even in another language. Um, it's this beautiful blue and I want to make a tank top. It's a fingering weight yarn. I think this, I think I can wear this color. I'm not really like a jewel tones, um, person normally, but, um, I think this is going to be really pretty like picking out fuzz from it. So yeah, I have a lot of, um, yardage on here, but for crochet, I think it'll only do a tank top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swatch and just do like some basic stitches and, um, try some different hooks and then whatever gauge that I'm liking, I'm going to go and look at these tank top patterns that I favorited and see which matches it the closest um, to see if I can find one of my friend's patterns that um, will work for this. So those are two future coming up kind of soon things that I'm going to cast on. Um, other than that, I am working on a design. I'm working on it very slowly. The deadline I've got um, quite a bit of time, which is really nice because usually I give myself a super tight deadline um, and my new like plan is to always be working ahead of schedule so that I don't have to rush. Um, so yeah, I'm working on a design. Um, I think there was something else that, oh, I wrote a note, but I don't understand what it means. FT. I don't remember. I just wrote this down too and I don't remember what it means. I don't know. Figured it out. <laughs> oh my gosh. So uh, coming up in July is going to be my one year design anniversary. And the first pattern that I released for purchase on Ravelry was my float tote. And so FT means float tote. So <laughs> what I am hoping to do before then is make um, some additional sizes to that pattern. So right now there is a um, 
you know what, I need to grab it. It doesn't make sense to explain it without grabbing it. So this is the float tote. It is basically just like a bucket tote bag, but the special thing about it is that it has these little um, cups in it or like little buckets that you can put your yarn in. So these things are on kind of like a tray so that you can pull it out and set it on a table in front of you if that's your preference. And then I have decided to put magnetic snaps on mine so I can pull them off if I don't need, um, you know, three, if I only need two maybe. But these will actually fit a 100 gram cake of sock yarn snugly so that when you're pulling it from the center, it can go almost down to the very end and you're not gonna have any issues. You could also put like um, a ball of yarn inside of it and then it's got this little lip right here so that you can pull it out and it's not going to just like immediately bump and jump up over um so yeah this is the float tote it's called float tote because i designed it in my like keeping in mind color work when you have multiple skeins multiple colors going all at once and it was always getting like tangled up in my bag and i hated it you spent so much time like you didn't want to work on it maybe a stocking for example the first project i put in here was a christmas stocking you would have to like, it was so much effort to get it out and untangle it that I was not working on it unless I had a large chunk of time. But then when I put it in here, the yarns were always just sitting in their place. The project just went and laid on top of it. And then I was finding I was, it was more um, portable. So this is the size small, it has three buckets in it. And the large has um, five buckets in it. So you can see there's five in there and let me fold this down It actually i think i need to wash this large one because i've just used it so much but you can fold it down like that and it'll sit pretty pretty nicely on a surface but yeah it's got five in there and it's a little bit sturdier when it actually has yarn in it so i am going to use my small one right now to put my um ruffle romance sweater in because i've got three balls of yarn and then it'll just sit on top and then you can carry it. It's really convenient. So since my anniversary for that pattern is coming up and it was my first pattern, I am planning to design a two skein size. So it'll be more of an oval shape um, and it'll, it'll be pretty similar. And I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna put it within the current pattern or make it a separate pattern. So that's something I'm working on design wise, like mentally, not physically yet. And then I have another project that's coming up in the future that I um, can't quite talk about yet, but I am getting excited about it. I'm out of the like having so much going on with work and um, just coming off of the like previous busy season, finishing that <laughs> Woolberry wrap finally that was a test. So I'm like ready to get the creativity flowing again. Um, I have a couple purchases that I wanted to show you. Um, the first one was when I went to Hobby Lobby last weekend to get my um, kids in knitting and crochet club some yarn. And I saw this yarn, all the yarn was 30% off last week. So um, this is called Scrubology by Yarn B, which I believe is exclusive to Hobby Lobby. I'm not 100% I'm not certain, but it is like, this nylon, it's 100% nylon, I think. Let me see. Yeah, 100% nylon. And it's basically got that like tool netting around it, which makes it really scrubby. I don't know what's on the inside, but it looks pretty sturdy and it's all nylon. Um, so what I'm gonna try out with this yarn is making, I have been making in the past basically a round disc that I use to um, scrub and clean dishes. I don't use sponges because I hate the way they smell and they just seem dirty and gross. So I use, I basically crochet like four rounds, um, just make a circle disc with some tool and you can buy tool on like these three inch spools. And so I just make those and use them as scrubbies and every time I wash the dishwasher, I throw it into the top or like in the silverware um, place and it gets washed and sanitized, I mean more than a sponge. So I'm wondering if this yarn would work the same and it's a little bit, you know, thicker than tulle when it gets um, squished down. So I thought I would try it. It doesn't hurt. It was 
you know, $4, 30% off. And I just bought one to see. And yeah, so we'll see. That was one purchase. The other thing that I got, oh no, it's sticking. Hold on. Is a beautiful bag. This is a new to me bag maker. And this is the Pine Cottage. And her name is, I believe it's Nicole. Um, but it is not spelled like traditionally. I don't know how, how I've spelled Nicole in the past. So it might not be Nicole, but it's the Pine Cottage. And it is just a, such a pretty fabric. Um, she's got a gold zipper on there, which I love. She's got it lined in a different fabric. And it's got a box bottom or what I think is called a box bottom. I don't sew. Um, but yeah, it's just this really nice material. So I am excited to use this from the Pine Cottage. Um, she's just starting her shop. Like I saw her post on Instagram, these bags she was making for herself. And I was wondering like, is she gonna sell those? Because I would buy one. <laughs> and so when she put up her, on her Etsy shop that she was, you know, putting stuff out there just to kind of test the market, I was like, I'm going to show her that the market wants it. <laughs> so I got one and I think, you know, that my everyday slouchy beanie should go in here. So I'm just going to put that yarn right in there, but go check her out. Um, she on Instagram, I believe is the pine cottage. I'll put it below and you can see if she continues to make these gorgeous bags. The last thing I got you guys are going to love. So as you can see, since I'm in this new location, toaster is no longer gonna be in the background, which is I think the only downside to this location because I really like having the lights and the yarn and everything. Um, plus I don't have to move like whatever's on the floor behind me, which is great. Um, but yeah, toaster will not be seen. He might be heard, but right now he's scared because it's raining outside, but speaking of toaster, I got something amazing. I actually got it at DFW Fiber Fest, purchased it, but they didn't have it there in person and I had to wait for it to be shipped to me. So I have a new set of sock blockers. Oh my gosh. And they look like toaster. Maybe it's better if I do that. Wait, there we go. <laughs> I wrote in pink pencil again. <laughs> so I saw these hanging. There was a different size. Yellow, I think, means medium, which is the size that I buy. Oh, and these are from Perfectly Catchy Designs, which if you cannot catch them at shows, you can get them on eBay. Um, and they have, I mean, I think they have like states. And I mean, I this is where my Texas ones are also from. So... I saw these hanging and a friend was with me and I was like, those are the ones that I want. And she was like, they look like toaster. <laughs> like, I know I have to have those. So I was so sad when they didn't have the size that I needed. Small is just too small to stretch out my socks when I block them. Large is too big. And I really needed this medium size. And they said they could still make them for me if I wanted to just pay for them at the show or later. And I was like, I want to pay for them now. And I got them a few weeks later. So this is like my happiest purchase. So I do need to make more socks soon so I can block them on the toaster sock blockers. <laughs> I was so excited about that. All right, so I just have a little just update of what's going on in my week. And then I have um, some Molly Klein design patterns to give away, which I absolutely meant to do in the beginning and I totally skipped right over it and went straight into finished objects. So um, in the future, I would like to go ahead and do those giveaways in the beginning, um, but we'll do it at the end and that will be fine too. So um, this week, I'm excited for a few things. One, that the Stars got into the second round of the playoffs. They start playing again um, against the, who are they playing, Kit? St. Louis. Oh, against St. Louis. Um, on Thursday. So like as you're watching this, um, so hopefully they um, keep it up. I'm going to wear my socks that I was knitting every game because 
now they're lucky. <laughs> so now I'm gonna wear them. Um, so I'm excited for that. And then also um, I'm excited for Endgame, Avengers Endgame to come out. We just rewatched the um, Infinity War and yeah, this is gonna be a big movie. So I know my husband Kent is gonna go see it on Thursday evening, like right when it comes out. And then I am, I, I could have gone, I was allowed to go, <laughs> but it's just too late for me to go to a three hour movie at like nine o'clock on a Thursday when I have school the next day. So I am gonna go on Friday evening with my mother-in-law and we're gonna go see it. And I'm really excited to see it. Um, hopefully I will avoid all spoilers until that time. Um, and then Saturday, my brother is come. one of my brothers is coming to visit us and he's really not coming to see me at all. He's going, <laughs> he's going because we have a, an Overwatch tournament in, um, our area and Overwatch is a, an online, I'm not going to explain this poorly. It's a video game that is played by like teams of people and it's like an esport. Um, I guess it is an esport. It's not like one. So we're actually going to watch um, the people play in person. We've done it once before in California. We met my brother out there as well and it was a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be originally. I like sports and I like going to watch them in person but this is not a typical sport. The people are not moving around. They're sitting at a computer and they're <laughs> they're competing virtually. So um, it's actually pretty cool. We sat right behind like the, or in front of, I guess, like announcers. Um, were they announcers or were they doing like between match shows? I don't know. I'm saying all the wrong words right now, but it was a lot of fun and I'm going to be doing that all Saturday and I'm going to bring either my sweater or my hat or something with me to work on while we're there for eight hours <laughs> watching people play video games. Um, so yeah, those are just a few of the things that I'm excited about. Oh, and um, at the beginning of this week on Monday, I had my second round of this group of kids um, in my knitting and crochet club. And they were, I think every group is like more successful than the last, um, like quickly successful. And I think that's, um, one, technically they're older than my last group was, right? They're a little bit older, fourth and fifth graders. Um, I think I'm also getting just better at teaching and explaining um, how to do it. And just every kid is different. Like some pick it up right away and some don't. So that was really fun. Um, we have two more weeks together. And this next week, I'm going to be giving them a new ball of yarn and say, let's, we know how to do it now. Let's start um, actually making something. Okay. Let's do a giveaway and then we'll wrap up. It has not stopped raining this entire time. I hope that that's not catching up on the audio too badly. Okay, so Molly of Molly Klein Design, and I think it's just design, no S, and I said designs last week. So Molly Klein Design. She is a pattern designer, knit and crochet. She also dyes yarn and I believe makes other things. And I don't wanna say it wrong. So definitely go check out her site. I'll put it below. Um, but I had, she offered to give away two patterns and she said, winner's choice. So last episode, you guys commented below, we had about 30 people enter to win. And a lot of you guys were saying, um, you had to put your favorite pattern of hers down. And a lot of people were saying, um, dainty dots cowl. Um, people were saying Michigan Avenue wrap, which was one of my favorites. And, um, she has several faded patterns. She has like a collection of faded patterns. I think there's socks, maybe a hat, a couple other things. Um, and those seem to be the most popular patterns. So go check out um, Molly's designs. Um, the giveaway is closed because I'm about to give the winners away, but she does have some great patterns. Um, so the winners are, and I'll put your name below in case I say it wrong. <laughs> the winners are Tony. M. Olson, that's your YouTube name. And also Kirsten, I think Spruill. I'll put it below because I probably said that wrong. Um, Tony said her favorite pattern was the Dainty Dots cowl. And Kirsten, or maybe Kirsten, said that her favorite was the Fast 
fade socks. So congratulations, you two, you are the winners. If you will just message me on Ravelry, let me know again your favorite of Molly's designs. Maybe it was the one you put in the comment or maybe you wanna change your mind, whichever one you would like to win. Just message me on Ravelry, I'm Natalia. Send me a message, say, hey, I'm this person, I won. This is my favorite Molly Klein design. I think I covered everything, hopefully in not too long of a podcast. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great one. Bye.